Welcome back to another Brave Police J. Decker episode review. Today, we're taking a look at the episode, Partners with a Heart. In this episode, we are introduced to the build team. Let's transform! Huh! Heavy load, transform! <laughs> High tower, transform! No, not the build team from Robots in Disguise, but they are pretty close. This episode begins with a mysterious meteorite landing in Japan. Hmm, I bet this is some kind of rock lord or something. At the police headquarters, they are constructing a new base for Deckard and his team. Speaking of which, Saijima introduces us to his new teammates, the build team. Yeah. Unfortunately, the build team members have very boring names in addition to their almost non-existent personalities. When we first meet them, they are simply called BP-301, BP-302, and BP-303. Which kind of reminds me of Bumblebee's name in the Bumblebee movie. Where's B-127? Saijima tries to get the other officials to give the okay to program them with personalities too, but he is outvoted, particularly in thanks to Vice Commissioner Azuma, who definitely seems to come across as a jerk and a thorn in the Brave Police's sides. Back home, Deckard meets some of Yuta's, um, weird neighbors? Sure, let's call them that for now. They nicknamed Deckard Patokshi which comes from the words patrol car. Um, maybe it makes more sense in Japanese. We also meet Darian, I mean Masaya, who Azumi seems to be in love with. Aww, how cute. Hmm, I just noticed that she has pigtails just like Serena. Well, one of the neighbors challenges Decker to an arm wrestling match using a construction mech suit. Hmm. Too bad this isn't Daniel Witwicky. You know, because Daniel had his own mech suit? And his voice actor was actually in a movie about arm wrestling with Sylvester Stallone called Over the Top. It's actually a pretty decent movie. Give it a watch if you've got nothing else to do, if for no other reason than to see Daniel Witwicky in real life. So, Deckard throws the match because he knows that if he actually tried, he'd wreck this guy's machine. Early the next morning, the meteorite that fell to Earth awakens and begins taking control of all the machines in the city. Now this is starting to turn into maximum overdrive. Fortunately, Deckard and the build team seem to be unaffected. On the way to the source of the signals, Yuta apologizes for acting selfish earlier, and Deckard explains that he'd like to have many more friends other than just Yuta. They try to block the signal by putting a blanket over the meteorite, which is when we learn that this is actually a living thing called a Geisenite, which can control inorganic matter. As we see, it now takes control of the build team and attacks Deckard. It then takes a bunch of trash and combines it into a giant Junkion! Stop the... No welcome Wagonello stranger with that good coffee flavor for you! <coughs> Offer expires while you wait. Operators are standing by. Yuta's neighbors come to the rescue, and together they put the fancy blanket over the Geisenite, blocking its signals, and everything returns to normal. Well, after the build team comes to Deckard's rescue, that is. Yeah. 
Kana, Kana, Kana. The council reconvenes and finally decides to give the build team personalities just like Deckard. So, the new build team introduce themselves. The crane robot, formerly BP-301, now calls himself McCrane. Okay, not the best name. Sounds like what McDonald's would call their construction equipment. But I guess I was expecting something like Hook, Grapple, or Hightower. The Digger robot, formerly BP-302, now goes by Power Joe. Which is a little better of a name than Mick Crane, although it does kind of remind me of a character from Kirby. And finally, we have the Dump Truck Robot, formerly BP-303, who is now calling himself Dump Son. Mmm, yeah, that may be the worst name of all. Although, I don't think he'd have any trouble getting a job in Terrytown. And so, we end this episode with Deckard greeting his new team. Well, this was an okay episode of J. Decker. I wasn't a huge fan of Yuta's neighbors. Well, except for Masaya, he's kind of cute. But some of the others, let's just say I don't think they would fly today. I also wasn't a fan of this weird gesture that Deckard picked up from one of them. I don't know if this is a pre-existing obscure gesture in Japanese culture or not, but it just seems very rude. Like they're wiping snot onto their palm. Ew. And I don't like that Deckard was taught this. He is kind of a baby after all. They shouldn't be teaching him naughty stuff like this. But yeah, not a great episode, but I look forward to seeing more of the build team. Well, what about you? What did you think of this episode of Brave Police J. Decker? Let me know down in the comments. Remember to like, subscribe, and do all that other fun stuff. And I'll see you back here in a couple weeks for the next episode of Brave Police J. Decker. Our boss is a fourth grader. So I'll see you back here next time for that.